Good afternoon to you and yours. Welcome to Home Run, where we go to the legal landscape. In our legal landscape this afternoon, the United States of America has recently seen a record number of people quitting their jobs since the start of the pandemic. The Economist has termed it the Great Resignation. So some of the reasons reported for this mass resignations include burnout, the need for adjustable or flexible working hours, and remote working. Many may wish to consider moving away from the traditional employment scenario of working 40 hours per week and explore the option of being an independent contractor, which would provide greater flexibility. So joining us to discuss the topic, distinguishing an independent contractor from an employee is Ms. Paulette Neal, Associate and Attorney at Law at Duncox. Good afternoon, Ms. Neal. Welcome to Home Run. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Home Run. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure having you. So we're looking at a very, very timely topic now. But first of all, can I ask you to share with us what exactly is an independent contractor? Well, Dion, as the name suggests, an independent contractor is an individual who operates independently, whether under its own name or under a business name and is performing services as a person in business on its own account. So an independent contractor contracts with an employer to do a particular piece of work, but they're not subject to the direct control of the employer. So an independent contractor typically determine their own schedule, they choose when to work, you know, they bring their own tools and is usually contracted for a specified period. So there is some degree of flexibility for an independent contractor, um, which gives them the ability to work for multiple clients. Fantastic. So then, how can we distinguish between the independent contractor and an employee? Well, firstly, how to distinguish between an independent contractor and employee is a question of fact and also a question of law. There's no one way to make a distinction between the two. One has to examine all the circumstances of the working relationship. So, one will consider the extent and the degree of control that a person or a company that is engaged in the services of another is entitled to exercise over the other person who is performing the services. An independent contractor generally has more autonomy than an employee. So an employer can order or dictate to an independent contractor what is to be done, but in relation to an employee, He or she may not only be ordered as to what to do, but how they may be told how to do it. Mm. And an independent contractor generally provides its own tools and equipment to carry out the task. And they may determine whether or not they need to hire um, their own helpers. On the other hand, for an employee, the employer generally provides uh, the tools and, and the equipment. So those are some of the distinctions. Mm, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Let, let's look at the employers. What are some of the implications then for the employer hiring an independent contractor as opposed to an employee? Well, John, there are various implications for hiring an ind- independent contractor as opposed to an employee. I will I'll mention three generally. So the first one is uh, there are tax implications. So for employers, um, employers are tasked with the responsibility of making certain statutory deductions for the employees or from the employee salary, such as income tax, NIS, NHT, and education tax. And they also have the responsibility to remit these taxes to the relevant tax authorities. However, independent contractors, on the other hand, they are responsible for the payment of their own taxes. A second implication is um, entitlement. What exactly are they entitled to? 
employees, they generally have entitlements to certain rights or, or legal rights, such as paid sick leave, paid vacation leave, or paid maternity leave, once they meet the relevant requirements. These entitlements are unfortunately not afforded to an independent contractor. An employee also, um, they are given certain protective rights under employment legislation, such as protection against unfair dismissal and redundancy compensation and minimum notice upon termination. Mm. Thirdly, there is also risk implications. So employees are agents of the business and they act on behalf of the business. Employees or employers, rather, are therefore responsible for the acts or any negligence committed by the employees while in the scope of their employment. For independent contractors, they are not, a, they are not agents of the business. And as such, the employers are generally not liable for the acts or omissions of an independent contractor. This may be a new concept for some of our listeners. So what are the benefits then of hiring an independent contractor? Uh, I can think of a few benefits. Uh, Firstly, there is no obligation for an employer to deduct or remit taxes on behalf of an independent contractor. Um, You also have the ability to terminate the contract of an independent contractor with ease. Also, you, the, the independent contractor would provide their own tools and, and equipment and provide their own training. So these are not things that, as an employer, you would be required to provide. So those are some of the benefits. All right, we're speaking with Paulette Neal, Associate and Attorney at Law at Duncox. And we are looking today at distinguishing an independent contractor from an employee. You've you've told us the benefits of hiring an independent contractor. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of being an independent contractor then? Well, Dion, if you or if anyone is contemplating um, whether to be an independent contractor, there are advantages and disadvantages. Some of the disadvantages include the unpredictability. You know, there is no guarantee of work. So if you have contracts for short periods, then you will be always on the lookout for work. Independent contractors are also responsible for payment of their own taxes. So that is something that you would have to consider. Um, You you would not have employment benefits such as the paid vacation leave, as I would have mentioned, and the paid sick leave. And you would be responsible for arranging your own health insurance, your liability insurance, and also structuring your retirement or pension plan. Mm -hmm. So I would say that these are some disadvantages. But on the other side, some of the the advantages would include um, your ability to earn more because independent contractors can, in fact, work for multiple clients. They can work on multiple projects, including projects for competitors. There's there's also a great degree of flexibility. You can determine when and how you perform the particular task. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, if I'm already working as an employee, can the terms of my contractual arrangement be changed to render me an independent contractor? The the shortest answer to that is yes. But it is important to know that an employee and employer relationship is governed by a contract. So in order to change the terms of that contract, you would require the agreement of both parties. So once the parties can mutually agree to change the terms of the employment, then it could be changed to an independent um, contractor from an employee. But it would require, practically speaking, it would require the termination of the contract as an employee and then the party is entering into a new contract for services as an, as an independent contractor. 
We'd like to thank you for the clarity and helping us to distinguish the independent contractor from being an employee. But before you go, do you have any hashtags did you know to share with us as usual? I do have one, Dion. Great. All right. So did you know that a contract labeled and signed by a worker as an independent contractor does not mean that he or she is, in fact, an independent contractor. Hmm. Points to ponder and think. Can do, do I need to ask you how so? Or... Well, as I would have said in earlier, <laughs> yes. it depends on... Uh, you would have to examine all the circumstances of the employment arrangement. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's really substance over form. So the contract may be stated independent contractor, but in reality, you will see that, for example, the employer controls where, how the service is, um, is performed or how the task is performed. The employer mm -hmm. pays the taxes. Mm -hmm. All of those will be indicative of an employee relationship. Well, we'd like to thank you so much for the legal landscape today. Do join us next week. We'll have another very interesting topic for you in the legal landscape. And today, again, distinguishing an, ind distinguishing an independent contractor from an employee. We'd like to thank you so very much, Attorney at Law at Duncox, Ms. Paulette Neal. Thank uh, you, Susan. It was a pleasure. Great having you. See you next week.